sunsets or skates. Well, there is a painter who paints, and when he paints, we just take in the ripples of the paints, and when they swell against the textures on the page, and in their waves. Back home, my lover spends his nights all alone and thinks it's all about perspective and taking my thoughts captive. He'd be captivated by it. It's all counterfeit. It's all functional saviors that don't function or save you. It's all identity tricks. It's all grandiose promises exposed as illegitimate. It's the way my father seeks and swears by like it'll bring unity to our family. It's the way my mother drove away the same day that she drove the man to drink. And call it killing two birds with one stone or three. If you count me, I was a seed. She used to say I was the only beautiful thing that ever blossomed from her branches. I guess I wasn't beautiful enough to keep. The gun was cocked and loaded years before I ever watched her leave. But we always saw her finger on that trigger, trembling. I have heard tales of lovers broken by the bullets that each one of us call our parents. For example, in 50 BC, Parthenius and Isaiah penned the Iranian lover into Narcissus' story, who gutted himself with a sword on the man's doorstep. Whatever, in AAD, Odin found echo in a mountain crevice, rejected and lonely, until only faint shivers of her whispers remain. And to me, this far removed, they are as clear as the day. With that name's voice in my head, here in Poseidon's domain, for all of the fury with which Arminius and that pagan deity prayed, for all of the fiction children believe, and by which we are betrayed, and despite the winds constantly driving and tossing the waves, and all my double-mindedness, I still hear the refrain, this is not your story. When I watch my dad walk starboard, I picture a pirate walking the plank, looking down into the water, terrified, only to see his reflection and falls so madly in love that he dives headfirst into himself and becomes everything that I argued with those echoes about what he should be. I picture Nemesis like a John Wayne movie. I know you always loved the true grit, but at the end of the script, Maddie still doesn't have her daddy back. And I hope that one day we will be able to forgive, but until then, maybe presence is greater than answers. A revenge. If Zeus cast my mother out to Hades, she'd still be just as gone as she is now. If you send ghosts to tell me all of the reasons why I still can't sleep at night, I would be wide awake listening. And if you could hear me, I would still rather have you than every single one of my answers. And if you are listening, I would still rather have you than all of my answers. The sun had just begun to come through the windows when the phone rang, and time slowed the way the dust hangs in its rays when the room is still enough for you to see it. I always loved watching those fragments of old stars, memories of explosions that float in the air like both a foreshadowing and an embrace as warm as autumn, saying, you'll make it through. After your heart can no longer stomach the torture, or the way the pain always expands to a weight that collapses on itself when gravity betrays the attraction of youth. For the undress of age, you'll be able to breathe again. The thing is, there's no bridge for bypassing crucifixion. Down the hallway, every ringing scream beat the truth in, and the rotary dial shook on its axis like my pale blue dot spun out of control and exposed as no less broken than the same boat of hope that spoke from their silence like a prophecy. Ma'am, are you sitting down? I thought about life and man and assembly in my rib cage and sleep and watched the spotlight move upward with the sun descending. And all of the particles that we weren't made of, madly we understanding like they were right about the news and taunting like anything could happen with the right set of lungs breathing into this room. I sat in the quiet imagining you heard that same sound despite how loud your mind always was. What gifts are definite questions? 
The sun had just begun to come to the windshield when my whole field of vision became a prism system. And in a flash as long as a life sentence before my eyes, I had hope that maybe you would come to remember me as fascinating as every star, once monochromatic as ours, whose death gave birth to memories as colorful as this spectrum. It shone as if to say she'll forgive you. After searching the night and every dust cloud in her telescope or the empty rooms in your home and collapsing into your scent like the moment you'd come in late with the night's chill still clinging to the leather jacket that she used to latch onto like one day she might not be able to feel you beneath it. She'll be able to love again. The thing is there's no bridge for bypassing crucifixion. Expected perceptions and presuppositions that I can no longer profess. 
Oh, to the great iconoclast! You finally noticed the lack of a flashback. You won't know me in zeros and ones with you yet, Scott. And how do you teach a lame man to dance? There is pride in these wounds. I've memorized every step. Fall the way and promenade and sway and go for equating a passing rate on the test with taking your hand. This spec is a beam, and I cannot lean on my own understanding as a means to the same end as suffering is. I suffocated in the tree of knowledge. I broke both of my legs at the root of good and evil, and if I'm to wonder beyond wondering where the wonder went again, I'm convinced it has to be in the mystery. Please let it be. I spent my life clutching fish so tight, trying to control a future I can't define. I kept clenched teeth, never realizing, idealizing the past is not a ticket back in time. I mean, I keep almost abiding in the present time like I believe it's true. I mean, I keep almost believing in being led into the dance with you.